is Mina Side Allsop, and welcome to episode three of Mina's Basket Case. I am still in my mother and father-in-law's back garden, picking this wonderful plant called Jack by the Hedge, or garlic mustard. And the name of this plant kind of gives you a hint as to what it tastes like. Something in between garlic and mustard. The tops of the plant are much, much more mustardy than the rest of it, and these little florets at the top almost taste like horseradish or wasabi. I used to run a supper club back in the day and we used the tops of these to make a fake horseradish sauce to go with some wonderful roast mutton that we'd made and it was just divine and you can use it in that way but what I'm interested in today is the really really big leaves that are the, that are at the base of this plant. Now, when you're picking it normally, do be aware of where you are picking it because it's at perfect doggy height. So make sure that you're not picking it somewhere where it might have gotten weed on by dogs. Um, so not on the edges of paths or the sides of fences and places like that. But if you happen to have it growing in your garden, or in my case, my mother and father is Lord's garden, you can come out and pick it in the same way that I am doing now. And if you are going to make the dish that I'm making in this video today, you are going to need the really, really big leaves. So you don't often find them when they're as big as that, but even ones as big as that will do. So I'm going to pick loads and fill my basket and take them home. Due to a snafu involving a baby, my phone and the delete button, Portions of today's episode have had to be refilmed. The downside to this is that this time when I went back to the parents' garden, there wasn't quite as much garlic mustard as there was last time because I've already picked it. Um, so today's donme are going to be made half with garlic mustard and half with nettle leaves. So in a way, it's good because you'll get to learn a different, slightly different technique. Um, so let's get started. After picking all of that amazing garlic mustard leaf, I needed other wild ingredients to add to my forage dolme. The first thing I found was this. This is Darwin's barberry. Darwin's barberry is also related to Mahonia or Oregon grape. These, however, have orange blossoms. These blossoms taste really citrusy and zingy and they're going to give a nice lift to our dolme. The next thing that I've got is this. These are wild garlic leaves. I've got them for their wonderful garlicky flavor. The next thing I've got is ground elder. Ground elder I've picked because of the fact that it tastes wonderfully parsley-like. The next thing is sorrel. Sorrel is there for its wonderful lemony flavor. Then we've got nettles. I picked nettles for their wonderful earthy spinach-like flavor. And lastly, these are the tops from the garlic mustard leaves. In this pot, I've got the water that I used to blanch my nettles. And I'm now adding to it one cup of washed rice. I'll add a bit of salt, stir it and leave it to cook. In this bowl, I've got all of the wild greens that I've chopped up. To that, I'm going to add some currants, some toasted pine nuts, and some chopped mint. My rice is now almost completely cooked. Most of the water has evaporated out. The grains are fluffier, but if you break any of them open, you'll notice that there is a small core of uncooked rice in the middle, and that's exactly where you need to stop. So I'm going to go and drain this rice now. While my rice is cooling slightly, I'm just going to chop up my mint and add it to my bowl of wild herbs. Now I'm going to add my rice. It's still quite hot but that's good because you want the residual heat from the rice 
to wilt down all of the wild herbs and plants that we've got in here. Right, I'm done folding all of my ingredients into the rice. Garlic mustard leaves that we picked earlier. Now, they come like that. You need to chop off the stems and put them into piles. I've got three different sizes of leaves here, so I'm gonna actually make three piles. Your next step is to line the base of your pan with the smaller garlic mustard leaves. You want to overlap the leaves enough that there are no gaps anywhere. Now that the whole of the base of the pot is lined, the next thing I've got to do is to stuff my garlic mustard leaves. So I'm going to put a spoonful of my rice into the middle. And then I'm going to fold over the sides like that, bring it over while pressing my rice mixture down and then just roll it up. So it becomes like a little cigar shape that you can see there with all of my ingredients neatly tucked inside. And each one of these, as I roll them, is going to get placed into my greased and lined pot. So again, that's mixture into the middle. The larger these leaves are, the easier your job will be. So again, I'll turn it around so you can see a bit better what's going on. Fold over the sides. Bring it up over and roll. Again, fold, tuck and roll. last gap. Now I've run out of garlic mustard leaves that are big enough so I'm gonna switch over to nettles to do the final ones. Now these nettle leaves I have blanched them just for a few seconds in a pot so that they are not gonna sting me and then they're pliable and soft enough to be able to do this with. What I did was I actually laid all of my nettle leaves into a little pile, like so, and then put the whole thing into my pot of water at once, and then drained the whole thing out with a spatula. And that way it stopped them from crinkling up and then you'd have had a job of trying to straighten them all out. The procedure with the nettle leaves is almost exactly the same as it was for the garlic mustard leaves. So again, fold over the sides, flip over your mixture and roll. And I'll put those in the middle. You can get away with slightly less mixture in them with the nettles as you could with the garlic mustard 
because of the fact that the leaves are that much narrower. Nettle leaves are significantly more forgiving than the garlic mustard because they're that much tougher. They're not as prone to tearing and in a way better for beginners but I think the flavour of the garlic mustard ones is better than the ones for nettles but maybe that's just me. Now that I'm finished with rolling and laying them into my pan, you can see the garlic mustard leaves on the outside. They're much lighter green at this stage. And then you've got the nettle ones in the middle, which are a much darker green. To protect these during cooking, I am going to cover them with more garlic mustard leaves. You want to overlap again so that they're completely covered. And we're done. In this jug, I have some lemon juice, some sugar, some salt and some water. I'm going to gently pour it on top of my dolme. The next step is to cover it with a plate. I'm using this because I don't have a plate that fits in exactly and it doesn't have much weight to it so I'm just going to put a plate on top of it. Now the thing to do now is to cover it with a tightly fitting lid. My lid's got a hole in it so I'm going to put a sheet of foil on top of my pot, cover it with my lid and then put it on the cooker on a low heat to cook for about 40 minutes. The dolme have been cooking for 40 minutes and I've left them to cool for about half an hour but I'm a bit impatient to eat them so I'm going to unmold them instead of leaving them to cool completely. So that's why you line the top of the pot with the garlic mustard leaves because otherwise this would have been our dolme sticking to the top. And then inside our pot we have, ta-da! All of the dolme are perfectly cooked. You can see that the garlic mustard changes colour and goes sort of brown and the nettles just get a slightly more dull green. So you just pick a point and pull one up and have a look. So that's what they look like on the outside. The heat was a tiny bit high, so they're a bit singed on the bottoms, but otherwise okay. And if you break it in half, you can see all of the amazing wild herbs that are inside. And the barberry blossom keeps its colour so it's really really beautiful when you come to eat it. And if I get one of the nettle ones out, again, really really lovely on the inside. The leaves seem to tear more easily after cooking with the nettles than the garlic mustard. The garlic mustard has a better texture when you eat it, it's more firm. But the flavour is all really, really good. So time to plate up. I'm going to be serving these foraged dolme at my wild food walk this weekend. Thank you for watching and do join me again on the next episode of Mina's Basket Case. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe. Happy foraging!